few days in the bracing atmosphere of the peace country. I think I will do myself no injustice when I say that the Priory School is the most select preparatory school in England. Lord Leverstoke, the Earl of Blackwater, Sir Cathcart Soames, they've all entrusted their sons to me. You can't see Holderness Hall from here, but there's a very fine view from the chapel tower. Sir Rete de Scipuri, I will begin with the boys' room. his father. It arrived on the morning of his disappearance. Had you received one from Italy? Not recently. Where is the letter now? It cannot be found. It must have been on the boy's person when he was abducted. Who sleeps in the adjoining room? Shall we to just keep you in? Now you're the sort of chap, I dare say. You would sleep through a thunderstorm. Hmm? You would, sir. Really? And why is that, do you suppose? There's a mouse, sir. In the wainscot, sir. And it wakes us both up, sir. Sometimes, sir. Mouse? So any noise from Lord Salter's room? Well, the door creaks, sir. We always hear the door. On the night of the disappearance. Did you hear anything there? No, sir. We couldn't even hear the crying. Crying? Yes, sir. He sometimes cries, sir. Sometimes, sir. Thank you, boys. Found nothing in the grounds? There's no knowing what I have found. The trail is cold. Master! Master, the Duke of Holdness is here, Headmaster. Thank you, Mr. Avery. Good, Mr. Wilder. Mr. Holmes? Yes. The Duke is waiting, Mr. Holmes. That will never do. Your Grace? Mr. Wilder? I called yesterday, Dr. Huxtable. But I was too late to prevent your starting for London. His Grace is surprised, Dr. Huxtable, that you should have invited Mr. Holmes to undertake an investigation without consulting him first. When I learned that the police had failed... It is by no means certain that the police have failed. Oh, but surely, Mr. Wilder... You are well aware, Dr. Huxtable, how anxious His Grace is to avoid all public scandal. He prefers to take as few people as possible into his confidence. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilder. The matter is easily remedied. Mr. Sherlock Holmes can return to London by the morning train. Oh, hardly that. Hardly. I enjoy your invigorating northern air. I shall spend, at any rate, a few days upon your moors, 
Who knows, I may at least find Herr Heidegger's bicycle, if nothing else. This is not a trivial matter, Mr. Holmes. I am gratified that you think not, Your Grace. If there was meaning in that remark, Mr. Holmes, I'm afraid it escaped me. Your only child has disappeared. Your hopes, your future, your noble family itself is threatened with dissolution. Your point, sir? I ask your grace, what is modesty to this? To your child's life? What is reputation? But then it might be replied, what is continuance without honor? However, I believe you are largely in the right, Mr. Holmes. If you refer to the constraints I have placed upon the activities of the police, then perhaps I have imposed too much. I have a morbid fear of the public gaze. It would be foolish not to avail ourselves of Mr. Holmes' services, James, now that he is here. Mr. Holmes. Your Grace. Perhaps you would like to come and stay with us at Holderness Hall. I thank Your Grace, but I think for the purposes of my investigation, it would be wiser for me to remain here at the scene of the mystery. As you wish. Mr. Wilder or myself will be available to provide you with any assistance that you might require. Might I ask whether you have formed any explanation as to the mysterious disappearance of your son? No, sir. I have not. He's a fine boy, Mr. Holmes. And how long has he been in your class? Since his arrival here. Did he speak much of his family? Not much. It's my belief that he missed his mother. There's something of his father's reticence in him, you understand? The separation between the Duke and the Duchess, did he talk about that? Not really. It's a little mysterious. The boy insisted that they loved each other very much. You don't think that could be whistling in the wind to cheer himself up? No, he is a very realistic child. Ah, but not a very realistic family. My research shows they once provided a member of the Hellfire Club. You wouldn't know, I suppose, what time Herr Heidegger retired to his room on the night of the disappearance. Not really, but uh, quite late. After 11, he was duty roundmaster that night. You're a cyclist, I believe. Yes. Oh, yes. Did Lord Salter ever accompany you? No, he is not yet able to retain his balance. You wouldn't, I suppose happen to know the make of tyres on Herr Heidegger's bicycle. Certainly a lovely bicycle, by the way, made in Bremen. The tyres were Palmer, you know, the ones with longitudinal tread. I know them well. Thank you. Doubly helpful. Pleasure, Mr. Holmes. Dinner will be at eight. I beg your pardon. Holmes? This case grows upon me, Watson. There are decidedly points of interest in connection with it. Here, look at this man. There are certain geographical features which may have a good deal to do with our investigation. This dark square is the Priory School. This, the main road, with no side turning for a mile either way. To the north of the school, the land rises slowly. To the south, a large district of arable land with high walls and hedgerows. Impossible territory for a bicycle. 